agriculture in North Carolina is extremely diverse. Um, this we grow everything from Christmas trees to bell peppers and okra to cattle in North Carolina. This presents a great opportunity for North Carolina's farmers because it means that they have the ability to be diverse in what they produce and therefore make more money for them and their families. However, this also presents a unique challenge to Farm Bureau so that um, for their policymakers because it is difficult to balance everyone's needs and wants. Uh, during this discussion, I hope we can decide some best practices. From the Sweet Potato Association to the Strawberry Growers Association, there's no question that North Carolina is diverse in the commodities and crops that it produces for the state, nationwide, and for the world. I look forward to discussing with our group how we feel that each group in all of the commodities that are grown in North Carolina, so that each person is represented as to create a diverse community, we all need to be heard. Diversity in agriculture comes in many forms, from ethnicity to age to commodity to size. Farm Bureau as a grassroots organization has the responsibility of accurately representing the diversity of our country, not only as a moral obligation, but because diversity is good for business. Diverse companies earn up to 2.5 times cash flow per employee. Today, we'll engage in discussion on exactly how we can increase this diverse pool of leadership in Farm Bureau. North Carolina agriculture and agriculture around the world is extremely diverse in what they grow between blueberries and soybeans and how they grow it in conventional and organic methods. We as Farm Bureau need to be welcoming to every single one of these groups within the industry so that we can curate leaders and pool leaders to become the futures of tomorrow so that we can continue to grow and provide for a growing population. North Carolina is the seventh most diverse agricultural state from row crops to cattle to Christmas trees. It is important that we understand that each farm is different with what they grow. Diversity within farming allows for greater profits and better markets for our products. I believe we as Farm Bureau must include all our farmers no matter what they grow or how old or young they might be. The American Farm Bureau mission rests upon the idea that we are stronger when we work together. Therefore, it is important that we work together and find solutions, not only for agricultural issues, not only to elevate leaders, but also to speak upon the diversity that exists amongst our production, how we grow, how we market, how we strategize will all be beneficial in generating positive outcomes for the next generation. You have heard the opening statements. The competitors may now proceed with the discussion. Competitors, please direct your discussion to your fellow panel members. Now I think one thing that we really need to talk about is the diversity within Farm Bureau because this is a question about Farm Bureau and how Farm Bureau can diversify. We as Farm Bureau obviously represent a wide variety of agriculturalists. Um, even on this panel alone we have people from agriculture backgrounds, people who aren't from extremely agricultural backgrounds, urbanites would may have you. Um, so I think something that we really need to attack in this question is how we become more diversified because some farmers, some producers might not feel welcomed within Farm Bureau because a lot of people think of it as a traditional row crop organization and that is a supporter. But we also have apiary and blueberries and apple producers within this organization that need to be represented. I like that Danielle. you highlighted that because it really shows that Farm Bureau is making the necessary steps needed to include those people. I mean, look at the board here. We, we have a lot of different people involved on this, uh, this panel here. And even I want to highlight some of the programs that we've also seen recently, last April, they actually did their inaugural, inaugural program with Manners, Minorities in Agriculture and Natural Resources Related Sciences. We actually saw they had a fellowship program where they allowed them participation at the national conference, right? And not only were we there, they also allowed us to leave feedback. And one of the things that really comes when you talk about like diversity and whatever and what that means to you, because sometimes, you know, diversity can't be an umbrella term. So it's important that when we engage diverse audiences, we have to make them feel involved in what they are a part of, right? And I like that you're going back to highlighting the diversity of that production, right? Because what one ex grower may be experiencing in one part of the state may be different, but how they resolve their issues is where they can find similarities, right? And so how we go about resolving our differences is most important. And I wanted to talk about like how we can understand education within this. Like, I feel like a lot of things come back to education. I know Lily, you mentioned education in the opening statement, so if you want to please elaborate. Miles, I'm really glad that you specifically brought up that partnership with Manners. I think that's a, a really valuable connection to Farm Bureau and that's something that we can leverage to continue um, 
increasing the pool of diversity. And I also think another connection we could leverage with Farm Bureau is those connections to those 1890 land grant universities. If you, for those of you who don't know, um, those are the HBCU land grant universities who are focusing on agriculture research and education. And I think that if we leverage those connections and do things like have career expos and, and such like that, that we can put those universities and those youth, like in Manners and FFA, um, in connection to the jobs that exist and within Farm Bureau and just within the industry that we have a direct connection to that pool diversity. And additionally, Danielle, earlier, you brought up, um, or sorry, Daniel, you brought up earlier, how can we do it? And then Miles brought up the value of feedback in um, evaluating diversity. And actually, I was looking through some research in um, Jenny Clark, who is considered a a uh, conscious leadership expert was talking about exactly how can you increase diversity, um, pool diversity, and one of the biggest things she mentioned was the high turnover rate of uh, minority employees in a lot of organizations that lack that diversity. And she said that one thing we could do to address that is to sort of have an exit ticket interview. Talk to them about what they experienced that made them want to leave the company. See if it's tied to uh, having an inclusive environment and things of that sort. So does anybody have any input on how exactly we can make sure that people are feeling welcome, that we increase diversity, not just in commodities and age, but across the board, because diversity of all kinds is valuable. Well, I think that's an, a very important point. But um, I wanted to bring it back to something we all had in our open statement, the diversity across North Carolina in agriculture, like how we grow seafood, we grow row crops, we grow Christmas trees even in the mountains. And so I believe that the Farm Bureau organization needs to be made up of all these farmers who grow the different commodities because sometimes we tend to focus on our row crop farmers because those are normally the biggest ones and sometimes they have the biggest faces and the biggest voices connected to them. But I believe that we need to look at, well, these are growing Christmas trees and as long as we're, we have those operations in our state, they need to be represented within our agricultural organizations because each farm faces a different problem and different challenges and each crop you have to grow differently. So I believe it's important to have all our crops represented within our organization. Allison, so. this summer, I really like that point that you brought up because we have such a unique climate here that we can grow all different types of things. We can grow tropical crops and things like that. We can produce pork at a huge rate. We're, you know, we're one of the largest pork producers producers in the country. Um, this summer I worked on a research farm at North Carolina A&T where some of our researchers were doing um, research on how to grow ethnic vegetables, so vegetables that are typically culturally consumed in other countries, um, but how we can grow them in North Carolina as a way not only to offer a new niche market to our farmers and, and um, offer another avenue for profitability on their farms, but just seeing in these workshops how having things like bitter, med bitter melon or um, Asian eggplant how that makes consumers feel when they can have a piece of their home country mm -hmm. here and we can make them feel welcome in that way. And I, I feel like Farm Bureau can sort of leverage that diversity and um, the advantage we have with our climate here to possibly do a series highlighting different ethnic vegetables that are grown across the state or highlighting some of those farmers who may be immigrants or from um, diverse backgrounds. And that could be really a way that we're targeting the goal of this question, which is truly representation in Farm Bureau. Mm -hmm. Because truthfully, I mean, interacting on a day-to-day -day basis, yes, we see that variety of commodities, but we don't see quite as much of a variety in ethnic background in, in, within Farm Bureau. Mm -hmm. And I think that showing that representation, that appreciation for a variety of cultural background will really start to open that door and make people feel comfortable to become more involved with the yeah. organization. And, and I, you talk, sorry. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, and I think when we were talking about, yes, the diversity of people and the diversity of crops, and I love what you brought up, Danielle, about being comfortable, because that's the main thing. When someone walks into a room, they're not going to want to stay in there if they feel uncomfortable. So I think when we look at the diversity of crops that we have, I think that it's important. I feel like a lot of farmers might not know exactly what another industry might be. So like maybe having a fair where everyone is in their own different spot, because I feel like the we have the Beekeepers Association. But as you talk about, usually we think of conventional ag when you walk into Farm Bureau. But like, there's the Beekeepers Association. They're there. We need pollinators. So I feel like people, we need to have like an area where everyone can come together and learn about each other's commodity. Because I feel like until we know where everyone's coming from, everyone's background, how the struggles that everyone faces, we're not going to be a diverse and inclusive community who understands the issues of everybody else. Because Farmers have to work together. We are feeding the world. So if I'm in my little area of, say, soybeans, and I'm not dealing with the sweet potatoes, then I, we're not working together. And we can't just all be working at it at our own pace. We all have to be working at it as a full front. Because as you put out 2% of the 2 farms, and we have to expand that 2% or at least work together. I like how I you address that. that. It, really, it really speaks to not only sometimes we have to address how 
we are, you said one thing that really brought up, you talked about how we sometimes can be uncomfortable, right? But it's figuring out how can we become more comfortable. And I like that you expressed talking about like how we can show or display the variety across. We can talk about, hey, this is what I do with this product. And it's really gonna be back to communicating with each other, how we go about resolving our problems, how we go about selling those differences, how we go about even appreciating the fact that there is a difference here that makes me feel unique about what I do as well. And so Jonah, one thing I really want to understand is like in your experience, as I know you say that you are a fifth generation farmer, like how can you see like diversity playing out within your food system or what y'all do on your operation? Thank you for the time. Um, I, it's Diversity is so, so important. I really like what you said in your opening statement. Businesses are more profitable with diversity. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm sure we all know some people that like to just stay in their way and are set in their ways and don't like to change. But diversity is how we move the world forward. You know, the, there is no change without diversity, and I think that's something we really we we have done a good job so far, and I think we'll probably continue to hit on. But for me, it's diversity of thought. You know, coming, being willing. Lots of my family members did not go to college. You know, and they are the people that go to college or that do not go to college are much less prone to try new ideas and new things and diversify really than the people who have. And so being able to um, attend, you know, like you said, the land grant universities or any university really, and being able to bring that back to North Carolina agriculture is so, so valuable. You know, Jonah, I really like how you brought up that facet of education again. And Miles, you touched on it earlier. Yeah. And something that uh, I've learned a lot throughout my education in um, agriculture education and moving towards getting that teaching licensure is the value of diversity and, and being able really to be both a window and a mirror for the culture of your students. And I think that's something that we can develop across the board. You know, it's yeah, not just sure. youth that needs to see that exposure, but also our Farm Bureau members. Our farmers yeah. need to see that. Our Farm Bureau leadership needs to see that. Um, and also, Miles, earlier you talked about, and as well as Danielle, um, fostering a comfortable space where we can have those open discussions. And I think Neva Grace touched on it too. And um, going back to Jenny Clark earlier, that um, conscious leadership expert, that was actually one of the things that she touched on in her educational series on LinkedIn, was the importance of creating a space that's safe for discussion about misconceptions regarding diversity. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to have the comfortability in the um, personal connection to each other to be able to have those difficult conversations. And not just, you know, necessarily always talk about the good things. We have to have these hard conversations to really be able to make that change that you're yeah. talking about. And also education is a big tool in that. Yeah. So for some people who may not have the resources to go and get that higher education degree and become more exposed to mm -hmm. a world sort of beyond their own, yeah. we might be able to foster some of that in Farm Bureau. And going back, you mentioned, sorry. You mentioned that um, leadership within Farm Bureau being diverse and having that diversity. And I looked into um, New York Farm Bureau, they have a snapshots program. I know Danielle researched this too. Um, and where they look at their whole county and they look at all their Farm Bureau members and they look at what crops each farm members grow and where they are in the county wise. And they try to, and then they pinpoint where their board members are and what crops their board members grow. And so they kind of just want to make sure that they have an equal representation across the county that it's not just all dairy farmers on their board or all row crop farmers. They want to make sure that they have one of each proportionate to who is in the county and who like and make sure they have a board member that is in those and that they're spread out with throughout the county and not just concentrated in one area. And Danielle, did you have any yeah, more research um, on that? So going back to what we were talking about, I'll get to the research of the snapshot program, but when we were talking about being comfortable and the amount of diversity within the industry of North Carolina and of the United States itself. Um, we also have to remember that there's the heated discussion, which is the um, conventional versus organic. And that's a big debate, which we obviously aren't talking about right now, but that is a way that products are being created and marketed. Mm -hmm. So I think we also need to be welcoming to those organizations and those operations as well. Um, I was watching the discussion video and a um, member of Farm Bureau up in Massachusetts said that when they went into outreach to their members and their county um, farmers, they realized that there were um, organic producers who didn't feel welcomed at Farm Bureau, so they went to the organics organization. And that kind of takes a little bit of a blow to Farm Bureau to say, hey, we represent all of agriculture, the diversity of agriculture, yet we're having these farmers and operation professionals who don't want to be in Farm Bureau because they don't feel welcomed. And then going back to that snapshot program, this is where it all ties in. We have to be 
um, involving everybody within our community, being diverse, not only on the state level. I think if we implemented a snapshot program within the state, even within the nation, that would we would see significant change. We wouldn't see just soybean producers being represented. We wouldn't see just chicken producers being represented. We'd also see the Christmas tree farms and the apiary organizations and things like that. One Danielle thing that and Allison, I really I'm really glad you, that you brought you said that about up. the conventional versus organic. I think sometimes we can look at diversity as a polarizing topic, but it's important to come back to the idea that it's it's and, that should be that. It's conventional and organic. It's showing that these are also diverse growing systems within themselves. And to bring back to that snapshot program that y'all highlighted earlier, one of the big things like, okay, so we can recognize that there are diverse growers, but how do we make sure that when we bring those diverse, we're getting them there to stay involved? And the reason I want to highlight this is because even the National Institute of Health wanted to get involved with this. They actually stated that the effect, they wanted to look at the effects of having role models within organizations, right? A lot of times you see people increase their buy-in, they increase their fulfillment, and also the importance of mentorship within those programs is really important. And so Neva, one thing I really want to bring back to you, I understand your background is oftentimes within urban agriculture. You want to be within that space. And you also mentioned the Strawberry Growers Association. You have the Sweet Potato Growers Association. So when you talk about involving an organization, what are some ways that you think that we can make sure we're implementing programs to keep them there, keep them involved? And also that speaks to your organic point as well. Well, I definitely think, as I mentioned in the last meet, when we were talking about how different policy leaders, they are on a timeline, I think that, and I think that it's really important for us to put an activity in place or an event in place and then make sure that it's going to happen the next year and the next year and the next year. And mm -hmm. like what I brought up was having an event where just everyone from all the different associations, the commodity associations that we have in North Carolina, comes together and it's like a, like a little career fair where everyone kind of goes and everyone has a little spiel about what they do and kind of how their farm or operation operates. And I think that the important thing is continuous continuousness, if that's a word, mm -hmm. but making sure that you are not just building something that is going to happen. It's not a band-aid. It's going to be like a stitch to help heal the wound of like the lack of diversity and the inclusivity of farming. And I really I, like that. I'm so sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> but I just think that that's really important that we make sure that it's not just a band-aid. Like we are going to make sure it happens every single year or even biannually because farmers are busy. People are busy. We're not all going to be yeah. in the one same room at all the time. Or even we brought up social media. Even having like Farm Bureau has like a spotlight. I know on their Instagram they always are having stories and um, pictures of all these different farms in North Carolina showing off these people. And I think that's also a great way to reach out to people who might not be able to come to a certain room, but can look at these different operations on like a little snapshot on Instagram because farmers are busy. So like a little reel of like 20 seconds, that's that's good for them. They can look at it and kind of have an idea. So I think continuousness, that's the big key. I really like that you brought up um, both the idea of having that sort of series of publication where you can highlight diversity, that kind of goes back into that, the ethnic vegetables idea I had. That could be something that's part of that series mm -hmm. so that people can see a broad representation of agriculture in North mm -hmm. Carolina and also the same idea about a career expo. Yeah. And not only can that be a place where different producers of different commodities can network and get to know each other and kind of learn more about each other's operation, which also provides them with another economic opportunity to diversify yeah. their own operation, mm -hmm. um, which would increase resilience and sustainability, but that's another topic for another day. Um, it will also offer um, that connection to diverse um, leadership and to diverse employees mm -hmm. within the industry. If we can have that connection, we can invite our universities to come out. We can invite youth like Manners, FFA, mm -hmm. um, to sort of become sort of indoctrinated mm -hmm. <laughs> into yeah. what we really want this to be. You know, we want, we have to be the change that we want to see. And that really starts from within. And I think if we can coordinate an event like that, it yeah. would be a really impactful way to be able to sort of not only represent that diversity, but also increase it. Yeah, I really like what you said about the change that you want to see. I, my family farm is not an organic farm, but we, uh, myself, I have personally done this and my, my dad has done this as well, made time to go talk to people who are in the organic industry to understand what they're going through and like, hey, we, we have done this to help with this problem. I know you probably can't use the exact same tools, but these are kind of some resources that really helped us um, in these spots and we've we've all had some great discussion but I think like a a real thing that Farm Bureau can do an actionable thing is we already have the young farmers and ranchers conferences local conferences things like that why can't we bring in organic growers mm -hmm. to speak at these conferences or just 
uh, like uh, if an area where I'm from on the eastern on the eastern part of the state bring in somebody from the western part of the state to speak because then again because again like I said earlier it might not be the exact same solution I, in fact it's probably not going to be the exact same solution but the resources we use are all the same and how we can use these resources the most effectively is going to make everybody more successful and Jonah, I know what you saying that one thing I really wanted to be able to emphasize is that we do see these solutions exist and I like that you propose one solution and one thing that also I want to concur is we have our women's leadership program we have our yes, young farmers absolutely. we have our programs in partnership with mayors with FFA but we have to make sure that we're continually pouring into these programs while also continuing to explore new avenues within them right and so a lot of times we can look back at the local level right we can look at our our local county farm bureau chapters hey can we go to the high schools can we get yeah. involved with some of the schools there and the reason I bring that up is because I come from a county with 131 schools, almost 100,000 students, and there was 91% minority representation within that school system, and we only had one agricultural program at our school, at our high school in our county, and so that really represents the difference on how we can actually even come across, you know, yeah. a lot of those things, and so I think sometimes Farm Bureau will have to supplement where some of our school systems will fall short as a solution, and we need to look at areas that even have, like you said, urban agriculture, as that's, an, that's a growing avenue. Yeah. And that continually brings on more leaders from different avenues, and they'll bring their viewpoints to the table, and we can make sure that we're elevating their voice when they're within the organization. Because not only can uh, top leadership want diversity, it also has to be a collective progress within the organization to make sure that it lasts. And that continuous stream that we talked about, it has to keep on, it has to keep on going. And Allison, I really wanted to hear from you so, like earlier, what y'all said, Neva Grace and Jonah and Leela, y'all made great points. I really like the idea of the um, conference, and I think that's something that Farm Bureau can sponsor. Like, that's something easily done. Yeah. Like, get together your Sweet Potato Growers Association, your Small Grains Association, and just bring them all to one place mm -hmm. and invite all farmers from every background. And I know that it's some, North Carolina is a pretty big state. It takes a long time to travel across it. So maybe have it in a different spot each year. Mm -hmm. Like highlight yeah. a different mm -hmm. area of the state, a different sector of agriculture. And, or do like farm tours with Farm Bureau. Like bring your folks from the eastern side and take them to the western side so they can see these productions and understand them. And I really feel like Farm Bureau's strongest point is connection. Mm -hmm and building relationships with each other, telling each other's stories, because we're a grassroots organization, yeah. mm -hmm. just telling each other's stories and how we can connect with each other and hear everyone's point of view. And so I know, Danielle, you've been trying to speak to me. <laughs> right. Everyone has so many good points. Um, so we're talking about these conferences and these programs that we could use for leadership. We have YFNR, we have grassroots advocacy and things like that. I think we could take full advantage of these organizations because we need leaders for tomorrow. The board members who are on our county boards, on our national boards, our state boards, they're not going to be there forever. So we also yeah. need to realize that, as this question states, how are we going to prepare those leaders, find those diverse leaders, not just the same leader for 80 years. As yeah. that happens in some situations, we also have to realize we need to be raising and educating the next leaders to come by using YFNR, using these educational opportunities like the fair and things like that. You know, and Danielle, like you said, and also Allison earlier, and I think also Miles and Jonah, we are very much on the same page right now. Um, both of you guys brought up the history of the women's group within Farm Bureau and yeah. also Young Farmers and Ranchers, and those are two really diversity resource groups. And I think that that's a tool that we can expound on within Farm Bureau and, and look to target other forms of diversity, not just within age or gender, but we can extend those things into race or commodity groups so that people have that opportunity for mentorship within the organization yeah. that's going to keep them a safe place feel like they have somebody who looks like them around or that does something like them to make them feel that comfortability and then also to retain them like you were saying and, and perpetuate that continuity I think that's one of the really important things that we could do within that could be sort of easily accessible like you said in addition to the conference I really love that idea yeah, yeah, I really Danielle, like you, you started said to about highlight the, the, um, the youth of Farm Bureau and bringing in our young agriculture producers because oftentimes you know we look at these boards and it's I mean, the average age of a farmer is 57 years old, so it obviously is going to be a little older. But it's mostly old people, older, <laughs> older people, who um, have been farming for many years and are well known, and that's great. But I feel like a mentorship program, like you said, like have a younger farmer mentor with the board member, and eventually just have a younger board member because yeah. sometimes these younger people they're the only young person on the board and they feel like they can't relate to anyone mm -hmm. so we can yeah. find 
better ways to bring these younger people into these board situations, mentor them in, and just kind of train them into these positions. It's also so a that, form of empowerment, which yeah. is a really important facet of that. When you're talking about mentorship, it's not only, oh, do I have somebody I can talk to, but I have somebody who's supporting me, who's giving me advice, who's fostering that confidence within myself for me to be able to feel that I can take this to the next step. I can see myself in them and keep pushing myself forward. Yeah, and we want this. Oh, go ahead. In the other discussion questions, I actually talked about having like almost a big brother program. So with you always have that person to go to, to talk to, as you said, as that support system. And we could do that with the older generation farmers and the new generation farmers, because a lot of times farmers come in and they kind of feel alone because they, like, especially new generation farmers, they don't know yeah. the first way to go. So I feel like in a kind of program like that, where you're talking about having an older generation mixed with a younger generation, that's going to kind of help facilitate that process because it can be hard when you have such a high turnover rate so I feel like that is a way of addressing the problem of people maybe it's not as much as stop go stop go it's a continuous process yeah. because it's facilitated. Yeah I really wanted to say I like how everybody on this side of the room brought up how we make people feel more included and I kind of yeah, I want to hit it right back to you and say what are some maybe as being from the city what are some misconceptions that you had about agriculture uh, maybe before you got involved in FFA, um, and maybe after you answer, Miles can throw some stuff in too. And like, what are some things that we can do to help solve these problems? One thing that I'll definitely say is, I think it, it was how agriculture was initially presented to me that really changed my mind on it, right? I didn't understand that we can grow food right outside of our school in a very small area. In my mind, the conception of the farm is large scale, you gotta have cows, you gotta right. have a lot of different things, but understanding right. that agriculture is involved in the cultivation of soil and the production of food and understanding how I could relate that to myself. And a lot of the times for me, I found myself outside digging <laughs> digging holes, looking at earthworms, not realizing these are healthy indicators of soils, right? Yeah. And so realizing how I could translate that into also being able to help um, young farmers and ranchers in, I really want to hear from you on your perspective because you're also an urban agriculturalist as well too. I was also going to say the conventional agriculture. I was ex I always thought it was like the really large farms and it's not all like that. And I even didn't know about the diversity. Like I'm in a bee keeping class this mm -hmm. semester. So that's also a key part of the ag industry that a lot of people don't talk about. And like bees pollinate a third of the food that we eat. So like it's really important, but I feel like it's just never brought up. So I just, I think what would help is just like we were talking about career fairs where people are just exposed to it because like I and until I joined FFA I really didn't have an idea about agriculture. No, that's, yeah, that's I think definitely a lot of people don't realize how diverse agriculture is and how much goes into agriculture like you said bees you don't often think of them as a crop and so I feel like we just need to find ways like social using social media to highlight every sector of agriculture and even for our, our older people who don't have cell phones or social media like putting it in magazines or publications Mm -hmm. I feel papers. like that's a great yeah. way to just show our agriculture's diversity within the state and the nation because it's totally different everywhere and every every crop has a different way of producing it also. And we as Farm Bureau have that responsibility to educate the general public and mm -hmm. to ensure that our county boards, our state boards, our national boards are diverse and not only the people that are on them but what they produce and how they produce them. Time has been called. Please prepare your one minute closing statements. I ask that the audience remain silent for one minute As we discussed today, and we all know, agriculture is extremely diverse from the things we grow and how we grow them, whether it's soybeans, blueberries, or whether we're growing things conventionally and organically. We need organizations and programs like the Farm Bureau to represent this diverse array of producers. We're a diverse organization as it is, but how can we become more diverse? How can we be appealing to the beekeepers, to the organic growers, so that we produce a comfortable atmosphere for these operators? We discussed things today like the career fair, the New York Snapshot program, which ensures that our county boards have a diverse array of producers on their board members. We also discussed possibly having a mentorship program between experienced producers and younger producers, producers of diverse regions. If we're able to elaborate and to capitalize on these things, we'll be able to produce leaders for the future so that we can continue to produce for a growing population. I believe that from our discussion today, it's pretty obvious that all of the competitors here understand the value of diversity, especially within agriculture. 
but we're here to be focused on solutions. And I think primarily before we begin taking any action items, it's important that we make sure we foster a safe space for discussion to talk about those difficult topics regarding diversity. Because without having those problems and recognizing our issues through programs like Snapshot or just you know personal connections, we won't be able to really target and to um, take on the problems that we're facing in diversity if we can't recognize that they first exist. Today we talked about some solutions varying from a career expo where we're focusing on targeting uh, a ver variety of commodity producers and also a variety of ethnic backgrounds, targeting on inviting those 1890 land grant universities, on inviting manners members, and things along those lines. I also think Farm Bureau can pretty easily take on another action item of expanding on our resource groups such as Young Farmers and Ranchers and the Women's Group that are focused on diversity. So with the, our, all of our amazing ideas today, I think we can all take the first step towards creating a more diverse leadership in Farm Bureau. There's no question that North Carolina is diverse in the crops that it produced. We talked about beekeepers, sweet potatoes, strawberries, all the goods. So I think that we can really work with Farm Bureau, as we discussed, to have a career expo, which would just let everyone know all about each other. Because until we create that inclusivity, that connectedness, we're not going to be a full front, which is what Farm Bureau is. It is representing the group of farmers and advocating on their behalf since 1936. It's a very important mission. And until we are all connected in a group, understanding each other's points of view, we're not going to move anywhere. So I feel like definitely allowing everyone to see everyone's viewpoints, and that's something that Farm Bureau can help do and we also talked about even reaching out to the older folks who might not be able to get to those things and putting it in newspapers and magazines nobody really none of us really read it anymore but I think it's important that we still include the older generations as they're there are forefathers they're the ones that were running the farms and like in Jonah's case fifth generation his last generation they're keeping it up for him to take when he gets out of school so I think it's very important that we educate everybody from this discussion today, it is clear to see that diversity in agriculture has a multitude of different meanings. From our ethnicity, our age, our backgrounds, urban versus rural, from the types of crops we grow on our farms and the ways we raise them. And it is important to include all this when we're looking at our leadership organizations such as Farm Bureau. We talked about solutions like New York's Snapshot program, about conventions to invite more producers in. We talked about the land grant universities and how we need to include them into our organization. I believe that connection is the greatest way that Farm Bureau can help us by connecting us to the public on social media and through magazines and connecting everyone of each age and ethnicity and how they raise their crops. So I appreciated this discussion. Understanding, highlighting, and encouraging the diversity of our agricultural system is necessary for maintaining the viability of our food system as a future career outcome and also a livelihood. It's important that we recognize the differences diversity has made within our agricultural productions and within organizations. So it's time that we allow diversity to flourish and also help maintain the next generation of agriculturalists. I think we all did a great job today. There are so many different applications of diversity. That's kind of what the word means. And I think from the farm tours that they talked about to what you were talking about with the ag in the classroom and reaching out to those public schools, I think those are all great things that we can do to promote the diversity of thought. Um, and I, I really like everybody's points and I hope that we did a great job of showing some Farm Bureau some great things that they can do to uh, further diversity in their company. Let's show these competitors our appreciation for a job well done.